Hi, my name is Jesse Johnson. I'm the head of conservation for the Smithsonian's Museum Conservation Institute, a research unit of the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, DC. I'm an objects conservator, which means I have expertise in the care and conservation of three-dimensional objects. And I've spent most of my career working with archeological collections in the Middle East. And my name is Brian Leone, and I manage the International Cultural Heritage Protection Program, also at the Museum Conservation Institute. I specialize in managing teams of experts to enhance the capabilities of colleagues around the world to protect and manage their own cultural heritage. Jesse and I have been working since 2009 with Iraqi colleagues at the Iraqi Institute for the Conservation of Antiquities and Heritage in Erbil, Iraq, to teach cultural heritage conservation. This video is part of our series on the fundamentals of heritage conservation supported by the Getty Foundation. In this series, Individuals from both the Smithsonian and the Iraqi Institute share their experience, knowledge, and expertise about preserving cultural heritage. There are links to the additional videos in this series available in English, Arabic, and Kurdish, along with additional resources listed below. The Smithsonian Institution is the world's largest museum, education, and research complex. We are made up of 21 museums and galleries, nine research centers, and the National Zoo. We care for approximately 156 million objects and specimens, and we have over 29 million visits to our facilities each year. Our mission is the increase and diffusion of knowledge. The mission of the Iraqi Institute for the Conservation of Antiquities and Heritage in Erbil is to preserve the legacy of humanity contained in the unique cultural heritage of Iraq. It accomplishes this through educating people in conservation and preservation and by inviting professionals from around the world to share expertise. Working together, the Smithsonian and the Iraqi Institute hold educational programs on heritage conservation for cultural heritage professionals from around Iraq. These videos will introduce you to these topics and share resources where you can find more information online. The term cultural heritage is an evolving term to describe a large idea. The phrase is used to describe things that are important to us that have been passed down over time and that we want to pass along to the future. These things can be tangible items like artifacts or objects, buildings or monuments, and archaeological sites. The things can also be intangible like music or dance or a type of food preparation. International institutions such as UNESCO, Blue Shield, ECROM, ECOMOS, ICOM, and others, as well as academic institutions and museums around the world all contribute to research, documentation, and education that supports cultural heritage conservation. This international community has developed an evolving set of standards that are used broadly. In these videos, we will introduce you to some basic ideas used by the international community, including information about agents of deterioration, the importance of documentation to record heritage at certain points in time so that changes can be monitored, and why planning, coordination, and maintenance is essential for good preservation, as well as ensuring recovery of heritage after disaster. In this series, we focus on tangible cultural heritage and divide information on tangible cultural heritage into museum objects, architectural buildings and monuments, and archaeological sites reflecting the courses we teach at the Iraqi Institute. We also provide an overview of how to prepare for disasters that threaten heritage and ideas on how to respond and recover heritage that is impacted by disaster. Our colleagues from the Iraqi Institute for the Conservation of Antiquities and Heritage will share personal stories of how they're using the theoretical and practical knowledge taught at the Institute, and colleagues from the Smithsonian will give an introduction to the specifics of each topic. Simply put, movable cultural heritage can be picked up and moved someplace else. This includes a wide range of items, including decorative art, historical and archeological objects, natural history specimens, coin and stamp collections, textiles, books and manuscripts, archival records, films and videos, sculpture, and even some smaller monuments or buildings. By being movable, this kind of heritage has more options when considering preservation strategies. Often movable cultural heritage is placed into museums where where professionals care for and manage it for exhibition and research. Immovable cultural heritage includes buildings, monuments, and sites that cannot be moved. Therefore, the strategies that have developed to protect immovable cultural heritage have to consider ways to minimize damage from natural forces like weather, but also develop strategies to control damage caused by use, construction, and development. 
There are dozens of international treaties, conventions, recommendations, and standards that pertain to the appropriate protection, treatment, and management of cultural heritage. There are far too many to mention here, but I will highlight two as important examples. Mostly, it's important that you know these documents exist and that they are part of an international network of policies and experts who define how best to work with heritage. The Convention Concerning the Protection of the World Cultural and Natural Heritage of 1972, commonly referred to as the World Heritage Convention, does several things. It defines cultural heritage and natural heritage, outlines requirements for nations to identify, evaluate, and determine the significance of that heritage, creates the World Heritage List and the List of World Heritage in Danger, and provides other provisions to promote the protection of heritage. 194 countries are currently party to this convention, which is managed by UNESCO. A more specialized example is the Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the Event of Armed Conflict of 1954. Also known as the 1954 Hague Convention, this document is the first comprehensive multilateral treaty dedicated exclusively to the protection of cultural heritage in times of armed conflict, as well as times of peace. It applies to a broad group of tangible heritage called cultural property, which includes architecture, archaeological sites, works of art, manuscripts, books, and other objects of cultural and scientific interest. 133 countries are currently party to the 1954 Hague Convention. Every nation also has domestic laws with provisions for the special treatment of heritage, and this includes domestic laws to protect archaeological sites and artifacts. Each of our conservation topics is introduced with a video by our Iraqi colleagues who teach with us at the Iraqi Institute. When not teaching with us, our Iraqi colleagues have jobs where they do the practical work of preserving, researching, and presenting Iraq's archaeological heritage. In the first video, the Iraqi Institute director, Dr. Abdullah Khorshid, shares his perspective on our work. My presentation, Introduction to Care of Museums, is introduced with a video by Nihayat Abdullah sharing her work in Iraqi museums. I describe the preventive conservation approach for preserving objects in museums. In the video, I share with you an approach for considering how objects in museums are damaged, deteriorate, or are lost over time. We use the phrase agents of deterioration to define the primary threats to cultural heritage. I describe an international standard approach to documentation, and I talk about how basic regular tasks like housekeeping and building maintenance are important ways to stop the agents of deterioration. Archaeological site preservation is introduced in a video by Mohammed Lashkri, followed by the video presented by Dr. Katherine Hansen. Her presentation on archaeological site preservation focuses on the importance of mapping to define the location and extent of an archaeological site. You cannot protect an archaeological site if you do not know where it starts and stops. Dr. Hansen describes tools and techniques for documenting sites and assessing change and damage. Aram Mohammed Amin shares his perspectives on introduction to architectural conservation. For my presentation on the topic, I will talk more about managing heritage buildings, monuments, and sites. I'll provide more detail on how a values-based approach is used by experts to help determine significance of a heritage place and how that approach guides treatment and management decisions. I'll talk more about the importance of planning and how having a good plan, and as importantly, a dedicated group of stakeholders, is crucial to successfully protecting heritage places. Mohammed Fadl gives a lead-in for introduction to disaster risk management in his video. Stacy Bo from the Smithsonian's Cultural Rescue Initiative then provides information on the disaster risk management methodology used to prepare for crises, both natural and human-made, and introduces you to ideas about how to stabilize and recover heritage after crisis. We hope you will go and view the other videos about fundamentals in heritage conservation. You'll learn more about how the international community goes about protecting and preserving all types of cultural heritage. You'll also find more resources that give practical methods we use to actually do the work. And you will hear firsthand from our Iraqi colleagues about their own work in cultural heritage preservation, conservation, and protection. Don't forget, you can find the links to the other videos along with additional resources below. Thank you for joining us today.